Hey everyone, I'm Mary Bethany Andrews from Dread Central, and I'm here today with the incredible Adams family and with John Adams, Toby Poser, Lulu Adams, and Zelda Adams. They are the minds behind the latest film, Hellbender, and I am so stoked to talk to you guys today. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. of course. Thank you. So just real quick, for people who aren't familiar with Hellbender, can you give us a quick kind of synopsis of the film? It's about a mother and a daughter who have a hidden magic secret and um, the daughter discovers it and it's kind of dangerous for both of them and we watch that journey unfold and it's kind of a beautiful story about a mother and a daughter that gets kind of vicious. That sounds right. <laughs> and so, so the creature, so Hellbender is kind of the name of the, 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 the being in this movie. So I'm curious how you guys came up with the name and kind of with the concept of the Hellbender. Yeah, well, it started with our band. And so we have the band, our band Hellbender, but the E's are sixes. And um, how that actually, that name actually came to be was I, I'm, I'm not even sure it was kind of this would you know Zelda I think that we always would say like we grew up playing soccer and it was like oh I'm hellbent on scoring a goal stuff like that and then it just kind of turned into hellbender and then there is the animal hellbender like yeah the, the little salamander yeah, hellbender? yeah funky looking yeah. dragon thing and so we just started researching it more and fell in love with the word named our bandit and then uh, we started making music videos that kind of influenced this movie. So this movie was kind of like born from the music videos we were making for our band. Yeah, because part of this movie is like a music video because there are the sequences where the two, well, Zelda and Toby, you're playing in like you're playing music together. And it was really cool to kind of have that influence steep throughout and having that music throughout. And so how long have you guys been a band? All four of you have been a band? Well, we've become a band with all four of us. Zelda and I were a band since she was, what is it, seven years old you started playing drums, something like that. She mm -hmm. started playing drums. So we had a band called Kid California and um, we played a bunch of shows and it was a lot of fun. Zelda was a wicked drummer. It was completely inappropriate because <laughs> it had this punk rock party vibe to it because I was still singing lyrics from my punk rock days. And here's this, you know, nine-year-old kid, eight-year-old kid playing drums behind me. So it was very funny. And, um, but as Zelda grew older, she got more interested in singing. And so she started singing and, and then uh, Lulu and Toby started singing recently. And they all have these singular, wonderful voices that work really well together. So we're starting to really refine our sound and the band Hellbender is uh, just a lot of fun right now. Cool. And I'm curious, what, what's the process like with the, with the four of you to make these movies, like the writing process? And I'm kind of curious, like, who comes up with the ideas? How do you guys sit down and write everything? Because you guys are doing everything for the movie. You're shooting, acting, editing, everything. So like, what is the process like as it's like a whole family affair? It often starts sitting at dinner or driving in the car somewhere and just coming up with an idea, whether it's for the actual like concept of the movie or just particular scenes or characters. And like what we come up with over our, you know, um, salad and, and John likes pork chops and, or spaghetti, you know, we're just slinging these ideas everywhere. And, um, and, and that's what it's like. And then we decide, okay, that sounds good. Let's shoot it. Let's be it. And then we all know how to use the camera. And if someone's not in front of the camera, they're behind the camera, some more than, more than others, depending on what we like or, or feel uh, most skilled at. And it's just a real democracy. And even when we're shooting it, if we don't, if we have three different, three, four different opinions, we'll shoot it three or four different ways and we'll dig it out in the editing. Oh, cool. I love that. So it sounds like it's not, you know, like in my head, it would be really hard to work with your family, but you guys sound like it's like a tight knit unit of like-minded people. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're all just friends and love the filmmaking process. So, you know, we always like to get cracking on our films as soon as we can. So because like that's how we've learned like we get the most done and sometimes like if something doesn't work out we can go home check out the scene that we filmed look at it on the computer and if it's if we didn't get it right we'll just go out and shoot it again that night or the next day that's like one of the great advantages of working as a family cool another, another good advantage is that everything every 
part of the process is open ended. Like the writing process is kind of organic. It's like there's no we're not we don't have to hand this to a producer and get permission for anything. We can kind of do all this stuff open ended. So like when we're shooting on set, it's we know what we want to say in the story, but we leave it a little open ended. So that moment can really tell us what we want. And the same with the editing process. It's always a little open ended. So the kind of the best things we're allowed to capture. We're not locked down on any rules or any particular things. Awesome. And so Zelda, I wanted to ask you, your performance in this is incredible. Like you're going through a big transformation in this film. And I'm just curious what was like, what was it like for you to kind of take on this character and perform this character and kind of become her throughout the filming of the movie? Oh, well, thank you so much, first of all. And it was really, really fun to play this role because I, I knew that she was, you know, this girl that was kind of coming into her own identity kind of coming into her womanhood and like as a 17 year old f filming this I, that's how i kind of felt personally like especially during covid i was experiencing a lot of just kind of figuring out who i am and getting ready to go off into college so i did feel a lot of like parallels to izzy's character and yeah so it was really fun but also it was it was pretty challenging as well especially towards the end of the film having to be a bit more aggressive especially with uh my my mom's character because in real life toby and i are so close so that was in the beginning of the movie it was not a lot of acting it was just acting natural with my mom but towards the end it was a little bit harder john and toby had to do a lot of reminding me like hey you know you're you're a bit more aggressive you're a bit more of a hellbender now and i'm like oh right okay serious face let's go i was gonna ask about that i was wondering what that was like to like with the two of you to film those scenes and kind of evolve into a much more confrontational aggressive relationship and what that was like for the two of you to be that together yeah it was definitely strange because also we're not the strictest parents you know and we do, we have very little secrets um you know and and so whereas the mother care hellbender you know sneaks off to like hide her stash you know and then uh you know we we talk freely about um drugs and 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 we we just don't hide much and then we also don't have many many rules and saying you know we instead of saying keeping our kids isolated we're like go out into the world and prosper you know and uh so it was strange to have to be a, a little strict and restrictive hellbender at the end but it was also really really fun when we did the um the puking scene in the snow you know the puking maggots that is more like us where it's like hey let's well well we're not off like doing drugs together but we definitely <laughs> did <laughs> it was a true bonding moment i had to accomplish that the puking maggot scene i would love to hear more about that <laughs> uh -huh. oh i threw something in there for zelda that she loved well to toby makes this wonderful homemade mixture of blood um it's very sweet and but um she also put like bits of rice and something else in there which is like a hard texture for like to look like the maggots but i didn't know that she was putting that in there and so when she threw up that stuff all over my face some of it got in my mouth and like i could feel the texture of the rice and i was i was not expecting that texture <laughs> it's kind of like when you bite into soup and but like bite down on something hard and you're like what is that <laughs> oh Oh boy. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. This <laughs> um, ooh, God, sorry. <laughs> I'm just like a mouth feel. <laughs> you wanna come over and hang out with us? Yeah. I wanna like, try, try this blood mixture. Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> No, it's we've learned so we love to shoot in the winter a lot. It because it's very beautiful and kind of scary. Um, but and blood looks really good on snow. But it makes you extremely cold. Once that blood hits your skin, it just freezes and goes straight to your bone. And it's 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 terrifying, but it, it's worth it. So were you guys filming um, like near where you guys lived? Did you go in a different location? Where were you guys filming? Because it's really, it is really isolated, but it's beautiful. It's in the woods. It's just like, it's very witch. It's got the witchy vibe for sure. Yeah, well, that exact scene that we were just talking about was shot uh, like 
10 meters away from our house, right in our backyard. Um, A lot of it is shot in the Catskills of New York, where we live. But I would say around 50% of it is actually shot outside of New York. We bought a truck and a trailer because I was all remote for school. So we decided to just hit the road and travel and get some wonderful cinematic uh, visuals. So a lot of it is shot in the Pacific Northwest on like the coast or in the rainforest of Oregon. Oh, cool. Um, And what drew you to Oregon for this? Was it you? (laughs) So I was teaching, I had just graduated the year before and then I was teaching in Oregon the last two years. So they came up and met me to shoot more of stuff with me over there and just with the nature over there on the Pacific Northwest over in Washington and Oregon. Um, And so they did a lot of shooting there in the woods and I would meet them whenever I didn't have work on weekends usually and I would camp or sleep in my car um, most nights. And we were still doing distance at that time too. So we would all hang out and have our little communal dinners. They'd sit in their trailer and I'd be outside under their canopy and having dinner with them or they'd knock on my car and bring me a hot chocolate in between shooting and stuff. Um, but it was a great setting over there with all the rain and the wetness and that really kind of added that shine to some of those gory scenes and all those beautiful sites that we shot, there was no one there during COVID. So we got these insanely ghostly spots to ourselves, which made them even scarier. (laughs) Yeah, oh, for sure. And I'm so... The Deeper You Dig was your was your like previous film, which I absolutely loved. And Lulu, you weren't in that one. So why why are you in Hellbender? Like what was that process in coming into Hellbender for you? Um, just with timing, with my job, I was able I had way more time to myself. I usually had three, four day weekends with my last job. And Zelda, you know, was in online schooling. So it was really easy for them to come meet me and me also not have to go uh tread home during COVID. So it was cool. kind of yeah, Lulu had been a huge part in our first three movies because she was around, but then she went away for four years to college, so she was doing her own thing. And it was great because when she graduated from college, we got to she got to rejoin the band, and we went from a three-piece back to a four-piece. <laughs> and and she brought a lot of like joy to and fun to um, Hellbender, which was something we were looking for. And her character really brings this chaotic joy, and it's a big help to the movie. That's awesome. And so you, but you mentioned your previous film. So how did it all start with the filmmaking? Like, where did that all begin for you guys? So we were living in Los Angeles in uh, 2010. And I, John had been on this fun, like rock and roll reality show. He was kind of like this jackass stuntman. And so he was having <laughs> On, on a set and and I my acting career I'd hit was about to hit 40 and it had just really kind of gone to slow simmer so we decided to just take the reins and make our own films and and you know why wait for others to give us the opportunity to do something we loved so we wrote our first script and we got an old RV we called it Harvey the RV and we took off for a year and made our first film rumble strips on the road and it when we were just hooked that's incredible and you guys have made what is this your fifth this is your fifth film now hellbender fifth? our seventh seventh yeah. sorry Ooh, seventh oh my god so wait zelda how old were you when you started making movies then i was six years old and lulu was 11 so we've been doing it for 12 years now wow that's so yeah. cool i wish my parents liked making movies <laughs> There's a really funny video on YouTube that we put up before we made our movie where we asked our friends or asked people out in YouTube land like, hey, we want to make a movie. Can you help give us some advice on cameras and microphones to buy? And it's like, it's really funny because there we are, these dumbasses, <laughs> four dumbasses that didn't know anything that wanted to make a movie. Thank and, God. Yeah, thank God we were dumbasses <laughs> because I think if we had known like how insanely difficult and complex it was, we never would have done it. And luckily we didn't know anything. So it was just a joy the whole time. Yeah, it should be a blooper in its own way. All those old clips, like we've got tons of great random things of figuring out the mics even and just recording them we've got john running up a hill and you didn't realize he was recording it. Oh, 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 i'm not doing this next time lou's doing it <laughs> and madness it is, yeah that first movie is like a documentary honestly of our process and of that road trip because zelda and i were homeschooled we all were just driving across country in an rv for the first time and it is just 
experimental. It's a great, it, it shows how much of a learning process it was, but it wasn't more or less fun than any of the other ones. That's fucking incredible. Oh, pardon me, but it's just, it's, it's, it's it. just, we so speak cool French. French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's so cool to hear about that and like how the collaborative you guys are and like how you've grown and how, look, look at all the success you guys are having now. It's just incredible. And I'm just, I'm also curious about what draws y'all to the horror genre specifically with both The Deeper You Dig and with Hellbender. Like what about it is appealing to all of you? I personally love the horror genre because you can practically do whatever you want. Like as a family, we've never been uh, much of a fan of rules. So that's why I feel like the horror genre is perfect for us because we can determine whatever rules we want to have and break them. And, you know, we can make our own mythological creatures. We don't have to make, you know, another witch movie or another monster movie. We can make whatever kind of monster we want. And also the horror crowd is just fantastic. Um, When we made our first horror movie, they welcomed us with the most welcoming arms ever. And, you know, it was just heartwarming and we're just really appreciative. That's awesome. Yeah, we're, we like, uh, we like all kinds of movies, <laughs> um, but with Hellbender, with like, I, I talked about the creation of that, but then with the lore, with like the, the, the lore behind it and what different items kind of make you react to, I don't know how to describe it, that was a poor way of putting it, but like, how did you guys develop the lore behind the Hellbender? We didn't want to have a movie about like vampires or like witches, things that we all have all this background knowledge already about. We kind of wanted to invent our our own characters. And so that was kind of, we spent a lot of time talking about, well, what kind of monster or what kind of mythological character do we want? Toby did a lot of research on um, powerful, like, mythological females like like you're always talking about lamia and yeah lilith and lamia and kali the destroyer you know people that that inspired us more than anything just to kind of get us in the mood but in the end i don't want to take no no no. in in the end i think it was important for us to come up with something very original in fact we only used the word witch once and it's something, and, and Zelda's character says, oh, we're kind of like a cross between a witch, a demon, and an apex predator. And I think she uses those terms with a human because they're, they're, they're terms that he will understand. But it's almost like she's just saying it, you know, it, it's, it's like, you know, child's play saying. In a, in a sense, we never wanted to call them witches ourselves. Yes. But what they do practice, but they do have a certain craft and, a, and certain spells they have. Um, that we had so much fun conceiving. Yeah, we love nature. We're big campers. So we really wanted to these these characters to be informed by like the fact that when you're out in nature, there's so much hidden magic. You look at mushrooms, you look at algae, you look at the clouds. There's so much magic there that you don't really know how to utilize or how to ride it. But these hellbenders, they're born with the knowledge within them of how to ride that hidden magic. And so that's why in the movie, a lot of their magic is is taken from just natural things like mixing berries and blood and mushrooms and you know so we love that and we hope that comes across i wanted a book i like i wanted a book of all the cool little mixtures i was like okay cool if you put this and this together this happens to you like i was like so invested in like the the cool effects of whatever and like mixing them together and cuz I used to want to be like a witch when I was a kid. So I just, it's so fascinating the way you guys made that mythology and it made me want to learn more, but it also felt like a fully fleshed out world of characters, which I, which I love. That's so cool. But you said the way you said it, it's true. Like we came at it from the same attitude. Like when I was young, I also was like, which, you know, which anything witchy is so fascinating. And, you know, we, even if you think about a kid playing in the mud, they're basically making magic with with nature. What's out there? You know how there's like found footage for us. It's like found magic, and it's all through like natural elements. And and so it's exactly from that attitude that we created this hellbender behavior and magic. We we tried to think as like a like an eight year old, you know, or something we could like jump rope to, just something incredibly elementary, elemental, and super simple. Cool. Oh, I love that. It's, oh, it's so cool. Um, I have one last question for you all, and it is, if you had to program a double feature of Hellbender with another movie, which film would you pick? That's a fantastic question. 
please Whoa. take a moment. I know it's a big one. <laughs> it always stumps people. We all sat back. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm going to go with the basic response and say the witch, because first of all, I love that movie. I'm going to watch it again today. I've actually been planning on it. So I feel <laughs> the perfect answer. And it's, I think it's just a really good story about, um, yeah. And I think it, it kind of relates to Hellbender a little bit. Yeah. I like that. Anyone I'll back her up on that. I mean, you know, that's a great movie and that'd be pretty fun to be on the same screen as that one. <laughs> I think so too. I'm like, it's a witch movie, but a weird one. And oh, it's such a, now I want to, now I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> I, I'll do a double, I'm going to do a double feature. Hellbender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, well, I was going to say, I mean, I think Carrie would go well with it, too. Um, you know, because you have the mother-daughter story. You have a, a, a young woman coming into her power and taking, you know, accepting her full agency. And yeah. And good blood. So that would be, would be mine. Ooh, I like that. That would also be really good. All right, triple feature then, because I feel like <laughs> that, would be, that would be a really wild tonal, like, event with, like, Carrie, Hellbender, the witch. It's great. <laughs> Um, I would say Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> wow! So, maybe cliche, but no. it is a classic for a reason. And, you know, I think it's really similar to our kind of music videos, to the band in the show, because it is just like crazy and chaotic and expressive and kind of sensual in a way, too, when you've got this teenage girl just fucking rocking it like a bad bitch. And so I think that awesome, free, chaotic energy with also that humor in the darkness and that rock and roll edge, I think that would just be the perfect kind of comic relief next to Hellbender. I, I would like love that. if audiences did our lines. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like in Rocky R. Like, that would oh. be so fun. Oh, yeah. And you get top hat. Go eat that worm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I love that. It's so cool. Oh, what a good range of answers. I love that Rocky Horror Picture Show. That would be a really cool contrast, like you said. Um, actually, and one last question. I know you were talking about like the next movie you're working on. Can you give us any more details about what you're working on next for a movie? Yeah, we're doing a fun movie that's a cross between Bonnie and Clyde and Frankenstein. And it's about a, a family in the 1930s on the Carney circuit, the dying Carney circuit. And their side act is artful murder. And uh, they run into some serious problems. And the daughter is left to sew back together the pieces of her family and keep them going. <laughs> sounds incredible. I am very excited for that. That sounds wild. Give us some crochet needles, please. I will. I have I have all my crochet stuff here. I'll give you lessons. I'll help you crochet flesh. We That's need incredible. it. We need it. There's gonna be a lot of crocheting. <laughs> so well, thank I you am. so much for talking to me today about Hellbender. I really appreciate it, and we cannot wait to see what you guys make next. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, what a nice talk.